The thirteenth video on root loci looks at lag compensators. We'll remind you now quickly what we've been doing. We've done what are root loci, why are they important, and how do I compute them. And now we're moving on to what impact do dynamic compensators have on root loci, because ultimately you want to do compensator design and perhaps using root loci tools. This video is going to focus on lag compensators and look at how they affect the root loci plot. Once you've got this insight, you'll be able to use it for design, but it will also give you a good understanding of the limitations of achievable performance. First then, what is a lag compensator? So you'll see we've summarized a generic lab here as K times S plus RA over S plus A, where you'll notice that R is selected between 1 and 10, and A is greater than 0. So both the pole and 0 are in the left half plane, and the 0 has a bigger amplitude than the pole. And you will also notice that the steady state gain of this lag is K times R. So in other words, adding the dynamic bit, and I'll just circle that, the dynamic bit there, has increased the steady state gain by a factor of OK, we're focusing in these videos on root loci. So let's ask ourselves what impact a lag compensation has on the asymptotes of the root loci. Now, first of all, there's one zero and one pole. So there's the same number of asymptotes. So what we're going to look at is this particular rule here. Where is the centroid of the asymptotes given by the sum of the open loop poles minus the sum of the open loop zeros equals k minus m times the centroid. Well, first of all, we notice that k minus m has not changed because we've added one zero and one pole. The lag adds a large zero, there it is, and a small pole. So those are R, A, and A. So if we put just those two terms into the formula, what we're going to get is the pole minus A, and then we're going to get minus minus R, A. So this is going to be the change we get to the sum of the open loop poles and the sum of the open loop zeros. So having done that, we can actually deduce that the centroid is going to move by minus A plus R, A over k minus m. And I'm going to call that delta c for the change in the centroid position because I've introduced this lag. And the key thing is you'll notice that r is bigger than 1, and therefore r a minus a is bigger than 0, and therefore this delta c is positive. So the centroid is moved to the right. OK, so this just summarised that. The asymptotes are now closer to the right half plane than they were before, because we have moved the centroid right by this amount here, a r minus 1 over k minus m. And why might that be a useful insight? If the asymptotes are closer, then the likelihood is that we're going to need a smaller value of k before we start getting oscillation and therefore lag is a low gain strategy. Now we're going to illustrate this through a number of examples and then you will understand it for yourself. So here's a first example. You notice we've got a g of s given here, s plus 4 of s, s plus 2, s plus 3. You'll notice it's got two asymptotes and there they are given here and here. What we're going to do next is we're going to add this lag compensator so k, s plus 5 over s plus 3. Now, I've worked out for you the movement of the centroid, delta c, by substituting in that a equals 3 and r equals 5 over 3, using the formula from the previous page. There it is. And so you see the movement of the centroid is 1. The centroid is going to move to the right by 1. So let's do the new root loci and see what's happened. And lo and behold, what do you notice? The asymptotes here are now in the right half plane for this particular example. So here you can see the lag has been particularly unhelpful 
because it means for high values of gain you will definitely be unstable and you're going to be a lot more limited in what values of gain you can use to stay around here before you go unstable as compared to the case where you had no lag compensator. Here's the second example then. <coughs> now in this example you'll notice I've used a right half plane pole and that's that pole down here but you'll see nevertheless for a large enough gain the asymptotes are in the left half plane so I can make the system stable. What happens then if I introduce this lag k s plus 5 over s plus 3? Again this is the same as before so you'll see the centroid moves to the right by 1. And here you go, you'll see the new root loci and now you're very very restricted in what values of k will actually make you stable at all and you are closed loop unstable for nearly all values of k. So in this case, this lag compensator is a total disaster. So repeat the observations. If the shift of the centroid is large compared to the asymptote position, then what's the lag going to do? It can either send the asymptotes into the right half plane or at best it's going to send them close to the right half plane which gives us severe restrictions on the gains you can use for closed loop stability. So, what do we learn from that? We learn that we don't want the shift of the centroid, our circular here, to be large because that clearly is not a good thing. So how can we avoid making the shift of the centroid large? Well, the only way of doing it is by making the pole and zero small. And obviously, that's a relative term, but if the pole and zero are small, then the shift of the centroid is small. And then we can focus maybe on the other attributes of the lag, some benefits it might be able to give us. And we notice at the bottom the lag is unlikely to be helpful if you've got right half plane poles in the first place. OK, so what we've done now is we've used the same example as before. This was example one, but you'll see we've introduced a lag with much smaller poles and zeros. I'm sorry, the figures shouldn't have come up there. And what difference do you notice here? In this case, the centroid has only been shifted by 0.1. And so now, if I look at this bit of the root loci and this bit of the root loci, which is the bits that are going to give you a damping, remember that's what we're going to be wanting, we want a damping, should we say, of approximately 0 0.7, those bits are going to be relatively similar. And the actual position where the centroid finishes, sorry, the asymptotes finish this position here, is not shifted so much. You can see it's only shifted 0.1, so it isn't having such a major impact on the dominant characteristics. And we've managed to achieve that by keeping this pole and zero small compared to the other values. Nevertheless, performance was still a little bit worse. The, the root loci wasn't as good. So you're going to be saying, what is the point of a lag? All these examples you've shown, it's made the root loci much worse. Well, here's the key point. What lag compensators do is they allow you to increase the steady state gain by approximately a factor of R. If you choose the pole and zero of the lag to be close together and small, then they will have relatively little impact on the remainder of the root loci. So what you're trying to do is get this benefit here. If we give yourself a bit of a smile, we want this benefit here while avoiding, OK, delta C. So keeping the movement of the centroid small. Now, where there is no integrator or where it's necessary to track ramps, then the increase in the steady state gain could be invaluable for reducing steady state offsets. So that's really where you need this lag compensator, where steady state gain is important. And the downside is you're going to introduce a relatively slow closed loop pole, albeit with a small residue, you will have this slow closed loop pole embedded. So we're going to do a couple of examples to illustrate this. First, we've got G1, here it is, 4 over S plus 2, S plus 1, and we're going to do a simple gain of 0.57, which gives you close to uh, the best damping. And alternatively, you'll see the lag compensator, we use the same K for consistency and add the dynamic bit. 
and you'll notice we're putting a relatively small pole in zero, 0 0.05, 0 0.2. Example two, you'll see the difference here is we've added an integrator into the system. See this S here? And again, we've got a K of 1.25 and K lag uses the same K, but introduces some dynamics. And what we want to do is compare what we get with just proportional compensation and with a lag compensator. And we're going to look at the loci, step responses, and offset. Now, just as a note at the bottom here, um, offset to ramps for G1, there's no integrator. The offset to a ramp is infinity. Um, but for the second example, we've got a single integrator. We can calculate the offset to a ramp. So if we use just K, then this is the offset to the ramp. You get 2 times 3 over 4 times 1.25. If you use the lag, this is the offset to the ramp. And what do you notice? You've reduced the offset by a multiplying factor of a quarter. So it's much, much smaller. So the lag has improved your offset, and that is why you might use it. Let's go to MATLAB now and look at these examples in a bit more detail. Here we go. So first example, I'll enter the G1 and the K1. There you go. And what I'm going to do first is plot the two root loci. So there they are. And what do you notice? Well, first of all, you'll see that the root loci are very, very similar. Look over here, the left one with just k. And you'll see that the asymptotes leave at about minus 1.5 and go straight up. And you look over here when you've added the lag, and you see again you're leaving the real axis at close to minus 1.5 and going straight up. So the key parts of the root loci look very similar. And that's because the pole and zero are small. And you look on this right-hand root loci, here they are. There's the uh, zero and there's the pole. Okay. Now, we've said we want roughly critical damping. And that's going to mean that you want to put the closed loop poles roughly here. So you're matching the imaginary part to the real part. Now we've done an offline test and found that's roughly k is 0 0.57. So let's just confirm that. So I enter that and look at the closed loop poles and you'll see with 0 0.57 you get minus 1.5 plus or minus 1.42. That's with just the k. If you use the lag compensator, minus 1.45 plus or minus 1.38, you'll see they're fairly similar. And so you haven't lost much by adding the lag. However, what you notice down here. You have introduced a very slow pole. So let's do the step responses then and see what this gives us. OK, so what do you notice? If you have just k, look at this plot here. The offset is very large. It settles at just over 0 0.5. By adding the lag, you've got much, much closer to your target. You've now got over 0 0.8, so you've reduced the offset quite significantly. And that is the reason you're going to use the lag to reduce this offset. However, if you look at the speed of response, you'll see with just k, you settle very, very quickly. Within five seconds, you're where you're going to get to. Whereas with the lag, although you've got a similar transient response, you've got this very slow mode before you settle. All right, let's look at example two. There it is. Stick it in. And let's look at the root loci <coughs> for example two. And again, you'll notice a similar thing to the previous. If you look at the root loci with just k, here it is with the two uh, dominant poles on this line here. And you look over here, and you see the root loci is in a very similar position when you're talking about the dominant characteristics. So you haven't changed the key part of the root loci, where you're going to choose k to get dominant closed loop poles. So that's encouraging. Now again, to make the real part roughly equal to the imaginary part, we found that if you use k equals about 1.25, it's roughly there. So we'll enter that. And then we'll calculate where the closed loop poles are. So you can see. Let's just get rid of that. And you'll notice with just k, you've got a minus 3.2. We won't worry about that. Minus 0 0.88 plus and minus 0 0.87. Very close real and imaginary parts. With the lag, you notice we are a little bit slower, minus 0 0.78 plus or minus 0 0.78j. OK, so you've lost a bit, but not a lot. You're in the same ballpark, which is good. However, 
again you have got this very slow mode, this minus 0.2523. So let's look at the step responses and see if that bears out. Now here's an interesting factor. Transients, very similar as expected, but you'll see the lag has got this slow mode, very, very slow to settle. And neither of these have got an offset because there was an integrator. Okay, so we'll go back to the PowerPoint and give some summaries here. All right, so with the example one, the root loci only marginally affected, that's in the key part that you're interested in. So that was good. The dominant closed loop poles were very similar with the lag and without the lag. The lag did introduce a very slow pole, so it was slow to settle, but critically, the lag enabled you to get a much smaller offset. And so you accept this slow mode as a price you have to pay to get the much smaller offset. Now what about example two? Again, the root loci only marginally affected in the key part, so the dominant closed loop poles very similar. Again, you'll see the lag introduced a very slow mode, so it was slow to settle, albeit the transients were the same. However, if you looked at step responses, with the lag, things were much worse, and that's because this example included an integrator. And so because it included an integrator, you didn't need a lag to reduce the offset. The offset was already zero. And so by introducing the slow mode, you've made things worse. However, if you needed to track ramps, of course, you've now got a benefit because it reduced the offset to ramps. So some conclusions. We've demonstrated the impact of a lag compensator on a root low size sketch. It's likely to embed a slow pole because if you don't choose the pole and zero of the lag to be small, then you're just going to destabilize everything. It does move the asymptotes to the right, and this implies a restriction on compensate again, which in turn implies that you're going for cautious con control and slow responses. The lag does improve the steady state gain, but therefore it may not be needed if you already include an integrator. And what we found is that if you already had an open loop unstable process, moving the centroid of the asymptotes to the right is likely to be disastrous. So lag and open, um, open loop unstable processes don't tend to go together. Now, this video has not covered systematic selection of lag poles and zeros, but given some insight into how you might start and suggested that the value should be small so that the impact on the overall low size shape and dominant poles is small.